with all this information we can compute um, the inf we, we can compute the amortization schedule. So we'll go down into the answer section and begin to compute this amortization schedule. In my far left hand column I'm going to put the month and these will be numbered 0 through 360 because it's a 30 year loan times 12 months per year, that's 360 months. We'll also note here the payment amount which will be made on the month. Also indicate the interest that needs to be paid. In fact, I think I'll change the order here. I think I will indicate the principal portion that will be paid and then the interest that will be paid and then finally the balance of the loan. So on our months, I'm going to start with 0, 1, 2, and after you create a sequence, Excel can recognize that sequence. They see that the sequence is 0, 1, 2. They can, uh, Excel automatically is programmed to recognize that the next one would wind up being 3. So if you hold your shift key down, start in cell A20, hold your shift key down, and hit the down arrow key, I'm highlighting these cells, you'll notice as I move my cursor over the bottom left of this highlighted range, the crosshairs appear, and if I hold my left mouse button down and start to drag, Excel says, oh, okay, the next one's going to be 3, then 4. I want to drag this all the way down to 360. Went too far there. It's a little bit too fast. We'll go down to 360, which is a 30-year loan times 12. And I'm holding my left mouse, mouse button down this whole time, so now that I release, it shows all 360. A lot of students, when they get down to this point, they will often go over here to the left and drag this back up, which works. But another thing you might consider doing is learning some of these hotkeys. If you hit the Control Up key, so hold the Control button down and hit the Up arrow key, it'll put you all the way to the top of that range of cells. As long as there's a value in each of the cells from the bottom up to the top, it'll go up until it does hit this roadblock, which is a blank cell right there in cell 18. So that effectively stops it from continuing all the way up to the top. You'll notice that that numbering does come in handy uh, later on. I'm going to bring this up so you can see what's in my data section here. So the balance at the very beginning in month zero, the balance is the loan amount. So I'm going to type equals and click on the loan amount. And I can just leave it as is because that formula will not be copied anywhere. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to determine what the principal portion is of this particular loan. Since this is a fixed principal paying loan, the way you would do this is in fact, why don't we, we'll go ahead and compute that up here and then we'll just refer to it. So the fixed principal payment would be equal to your $400,000 loan amount divided by 30 years times 12. So what we're seeing is just take the $400,000 and divide it evenly over 360 months. That's effectively what we've done here by taking the C13, which is 30 years, times 12, that's 360, and we've taken the 400,000 divided by 360. So effectively what, what we're saying is that every month we want the principal of the loan, the $400,000 loan, to be reduced by $1,111.11 and something. Now that we know that that principal is one, that 1,111, I can go to cell C20 and type equals and click on cell C14. Let me show you a mistake that students might make and then I'll come back and correct it. If you just type C14 here and hit enter and then copy that formula down, you'll notice it doesn't continue to refer to cell C14. So what I did is I hit control C, copy, and I move to cell C21, I hold the shift button down, and I'm moving down, and I'm going to go control V, which is paste. So what happened? When I hit the F2 button on cell C20, it brings up the formula equals C14. 
and then I copied it down. Let's go to C21. I hit the F2 button again, and that brings up the formula. You see that it's starting to move down to C15. Next one's going to be C16. Next one's going to be C17. What that means is that this is a purely relative reference. So if I copy this formula anywhere, if I copy it down one row, then the row reference of 14 will change to 15, as you can see. If it gets copied down one more, it gets changed to 16. And as you can see, the reason this winds up saying principal in cell C25 is because it's referring to cell C19. Well, we don't want that to happen. We want it to stay referring to cell C14. Another thing you should notice, and I'll just go ahead and do this right here just to show you. If I'm in cell C20 and I go control C and then I move over one column to column D and control V, it's zero. Why? Because although we didn't change the row reference, which was 14, now in D20, you see the row reference didn't change because I stayed on the same row when I pasted. But you see that the column reference changed. It was C14, but now since I've copied it over one column, it's now D14. And if I were to copy this over, uh, I'll go Control C and copy it over a couple more, you'll see it's G14 over there. We don't want that to happen in this case. So what we can do, I'm going to go back, I'll, I'll delete all this stuff, and we're going we're to start over again. So on principle, we want the principle to be equal to, and I'm going to be on uh, month one. I was showing you in month zero, but I'm on month one. I'm going to go equals, and then I'm going to click on cell C14. But I want it to always refer to C14. The way, to, the way that Excel shows that you always want to refer to the same column, or always want to refer to the same row, is you put a dollar sign in whatever you want to fix. So if I put a dollar sign here, C, it's now fixed to be C column. No matter where I copy this formula to, I'll prove that. I'll copy it over one, control C, control V. You see, since I didn't change the row, it's still in 14. But column, I did change column, but it still refers to C because I have a dollar sign there. So I can delete that. Now, I want this to copy down rows, but still continue to refer to C14. So I can put a dollar sign there, C14. So now if I copy it down one, you'll see it still refers to C14. Let me show you one other thing while we're here. Once again, I'll delete this, and I'm in C20, C21. I'll type the equal sign and then click on C14. While I'm still in this edit mode, I can hit the F4 button. And you can see it toggles. Now it's fixed the column and fixed the row. If I toggle it again by hitting F4, it's now fixed only the row. If I toggle it again, it's fixed the column. Toggle again, nothing is fixed. It's purely relative. Toggle again, C14. So that's fixed. This particular formula, we will want to have the same principle all the way down to row 360. So that is the correct formula. F2 is um, referring to cell C14.